And how you are spiritually shapes how you make those decisions. Now, if you're listening to me, you know now that the choice you need to make first is what? That's right. See, if you make the choice for God first, and you make that God's way, listen, listen, that equips and enables you to make those other two decisions God's way. What do you say? You see, when it comes to choosing a life's work, who better able to help you than the Holy Spirit who gave you your gifts? Come on, somebody. And, and when you make a choice for a life's mate, who better to guide you than the Holy Spirit who lives in you and knows how your brain is structured? So those decisions must be spiritual decisions, not emotional decisions. Not what kind? And folks, sometimes the stuff <coughs> that I hear, and I'm sitting there saying, what? People making decisions for a life's partner based on stuff that ain't worth nothing. They make me happy. So does an ice cream cone. <laughs> See, what are you saying? That's no reason to marry somebody because they make you happy. No, no. Uh, 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 we talk well together. You know. But what is he saying? <laughs> and what are you saying? See what I'm saying? See, you, you, you got to get below the surface. You got to get into the stuff. You're about to make a decision that will affect you for the rest of your life. It's got to be deeper than I'm happy. We, we talk well together. We have fun. We have fun. So do me and my dog. We have fun. <laughs> I don't have a dog. <laughs> See, what is that? That surface stuff. The day will come when neither one of you are happy. The day will come when they're not at their best. If you don't have God's spirit in this thing, you will not survive. These decisions must be, these decisions must be spiritual, not emotional. Far too many choose a mate before they have chosen Jesus and then they want Jesus to fix their mistake. Let's read some mating texts. Proverbs 27, 17. <coughs> I'm going to get through this by God's grace some kind of way. I can't wait on you. 27, 17. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Uh, let me read it to you in another Bible, the contemporary Bible. Just as iron sharpens iron, friends sharpen the minds of each other. And so relationships in the setting of this sermon, relationships with those of the opposite sex, sharpen our self-understanding and our understanding of those in the opposite sex. But remember, we've already learned that life circumstances can hinder a person's uh, full capacities. And thus, approach to such personal interactions, especially those that could lead to something permanent in a secular fashion without spiritual goals. See, when you're mixing with people, you have to be led into, into those, listen, you have to be led into those non-binding relationships by the Spirit. See, I, 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 can watch, I can watch who people spend time with, and I can tell before they ever marry whether they're going to make a good choice or not. If you spend your time hobnobbing with fools, you're not going to choose a wise person to marry. 
you will rationalize yourself into marrying a fool. If, listen to this preacher, you spend your time with secular people, don't think you're going to suddenly choose a spiritual mate. I'm going to get closer. If you spend your time mostly with folk outside the church, you'll probably marry somebody outside the church. See, I knew there was no, no amens on that, but I knew it. I knew it when I put in the sermon. Said it anyhow. Said it anyhow. Without the Spirit, the Spirit heightens your discernment. And remember, your pastor is not against having friendships outside the church, not against that at all. I've always said those friendships should be guided by spiritual principles. I'll hold my next sentence until later. But those, 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 those relationships should be guided by spiritual principles. So this idea of a relationship sharpening you has to do with, listen, listen, the idea of the relationship sharpening you has to do with, does this relationship make you a more effective, efficient, able, better person? If the relationship has already driven you to compromise before it becomes a marriage, and you've heard me tell you this before, you see, once you get into the Betty Buy stuff, you know what that is, don't you? Yeah. Once you go to the Betty Buy stuff, your, listen, your brain gets dulled. Your emotions get goofy. Your rationale becomes dull. Because on the female side, once the body is given, then the woman wants to convince herself she didn't give her body for nothing, so she'll talk herself into emotions she shouldn't even have to keep from thinking she just slept with somebody because she wanted to sleep with them. So then she starts reasoning, well, this must be love. And see, because you use the word love in bed together doesn't mean it's love because God is love, and God is not in the bed with you. So, 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 if the relationship is not moving you to a higher spiritual plane, then you are kidding yourself to say, well, I feel so good with them. What does that mean? That is not concrete. When you can say, as a result of meeting this person, I find that my relationship and walk with God is stronger, hey, keep on walking. Come on, somebody. I know this is rough on some of you, but go on and say amen anyhow. Just say it. Just say amen. Just get, get it out. Amen. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10. <coughs> <coughs> 